If you used Windows throughout the 90s or early 2000s, then these should be familiar sights and sounds. They are, of course, the welcoming chimes of Space Cadet Pinball, a game that shipped as part of the base system for over 11 years before being removed with Windows Vista in 2007. The closest anyone got to an explanation as to why this beloved game was removed was when Microsoft Insider Raymond Chen wrote a blog post about it that set the record straight. Specifically, he states that the game was removed due to compatibility issues with 64-bit processors and that he had spent many hours trying to fix the game before giving it up as a lost cause. On the surface, this might make sense, but what if I were to tell you that this wasn't the truth? In fact, what if I were to tell you that I have multiple versions of a 64-bit pinball game that work? Well, get ready because this is your host and commander, and today we're going to chart the final days of Space Cadet Pinball and trace the chain of events that led to its removal. Our journey will take us from the classic Windows XP desktop to Intel's failed Itanium architecture, the Longhorn Project, and so much more. So I recommend you all get comfortable and let's wind it back to where I started, which was with a video posted by Michael MJD a few weeks ago. If you're not familiar with his channel, Michael MJD did a video demoing a pre-release version of Windows XP X64. During his exploration, he showed pinball running just fine, which immediately got my attention and prompted me to start my own investigation. The easiest thing to do was see if pinball had persisted to the final release of Windows XP X64. After completing the installation process, I can say, yes, it did, and it's even listed in the games folder. I played a few test rounds and it seems to be just fine, or well, mostly fine. If we look closely, there's some graphical corruption. Several lights are misaligned, the left flipper is clipped, while the right flipper has gained an outline. At the same time, the ball plunger appears to be a bit camera shy. That being said, the game appears to play just fine. Still, this does mean that there was a 64-bit version of Pinball, and while not perfect, it's obviously playable. Just to confirm, I did actually load this version of Pinball into the reverse engineering tool Gridra and confirm that yes, it is a native 64-bit version through and through. Since this is a good time to bring this up, Microsoft actually shipped what are known as symbol files in their debug kits for almost every version of Pinball I examined, which drastically aided my investigations. It's also why I have function names both here and in WinDebug. Still, with a native 64-bit pinball on hand, it would seem that Raymond Chen's post is wrong. Or, well, so it would seem. Let's actually read the relevant post together. In it, Raymond writes, One of the things I did in Windows XP was port several million lines of code from 32-bit to 64-bit Windows so we could ship Windows XP 64-bit edition. The 64-bit version of Pinball had a pretty nasty bug where the ball would simply pass through other objects like a ghost. In particular, when you started the game, the ball would be delivered to the launcher and then it would slowly fall towards the bottom of the screen, through the plunger, and out the bottom of the table. Raymond then goes on to say that he and a coworker tried to debug the game to no avail, and that he believed that the breakage was due to an obscure floating point rounding issue. Writing a patch was complicated by the fact that Pinball was originally created by an outside company and that its source code was incredibly messy. In the end, they made the executive decision to cut the game instead of trying to fix it. However, I played quite a few games on the 64-bit version of Pinball and I didn't encounter any sort of collision or clipping issue. That means, on the surface, it would seem that Reality and Raymond's blog post disagree with each other. However, this discrepancy could potentially be cleared if we take a closer look. Specifically, the operative keywords here are Windows XP 64-bit edition. In a move that would cause numerous headaches, Microsoft would release multiple 64-bit versions of Windows XP with frustratingly similar names. What we've been looking at was officially called Windows XP Professional 
X64 edition. However, in practice, a better name might have been Windows XP for AMD 64 compatible processors, and it was the basis of the second and ultimately successful attempt to bring 64-bit computing to the masses. Today, all modern PC processors, even those from Intel, are AMD 64 compatible and are frequently referred to by the term x86-64. I wouldn't normally need to make this distinction, but to unravel this mystery, we need to dig into Intel's original 64-bit platform. That is to say, we need to step into the world of the Intel Itanium architecture. Itanium was originally intended to be a replacement for Intel's aging x86-based line of processors, but it failed to have much impact. Honestly, the best thing I can say about it is that it provides epic examples of how not to design a processor and how an entire industry can shoot itself in the foot, but those are stories for another day. What's important to know here is that Microsoft did have a relatively short-lived port of Windows XP to Itanium known as Windows XP 64-bit edition, and this is what Raymond Chen is likely referring to. When I started this investigation, one of the first things I wanted to check is if Pinball was present on any version of Windows or Itanium. As it turned out, when I checked the Windows XP 64-bit edition CD, there was a surprise waiting for me. Hidden in the IA64 folder is this file called pinball.ex and an underscore, which is a compressed installer file. Decompressing it on Windows 10 shows that this is indeed Space Cadet Pinball, and an examination of that file shows that it's indeed a native Itanium version. As one might say, the mystery deepens. However, testing this binary is slightly problematic, as Itanium binaries cannot run on normal x86 machines, nor is there any emulator available. That, however, is not a showstopper for me. As it so happens, I actually own Itanium hardware, specifically an HP ZX6000, which admittedly has seen better days. Still, this system works, or well, it did. I had to do some maintenance off camera to get it running again. While it was in storage, it seems that one of the memory sticks has failed and the second SCSI hard drive has also checked out. I also had to replace the CR2302 battery. Still, with some prodding, it kicked back to life with an EFI boot screen. Now came the fun part, installing Windows XP 64-bit edition. My first attempt didn't quite go to plan, however. With the Windows XP 64-bit edition CD in, the setup process would launch, run for a bit, and then crash. This would then be followed by system error lights and postcode beeps. It should be noted that while I've had this system for a long time, I primarily ran Linux in those years. While I have installed Server 2003 and 2008 before, XP was a new experience for me. Well, as it turned out, I had actually missed something in my research up until this point. While Windows XP 64-bit edition was designed for Itanium hardware, it wasn't designed for my Itanium hardware. Instead, it was meant for the first-generation Merced systems and is incompatible with my second-generation McKinley system. What I needed was the annoyingly difficult-to-Google Windows XP 2003 edition, and yes, that is the actual product name. It's even printed on the Certificate of Authenticity for the system. With the XP 2003 CD inserted, things start looking up. This time, instead of crashing the system, we're now greeted with a somewhat squished text setup screen. I had a few more hiccups, but I'm going to gloss over most of the installation process and save it for a dedicated video. After the installation finished, we're greeted with a tiny login screen, which is a stark reminder that early versions of Windows did not have great support for high DPI monitors. It's at this point that I'm going to transition to using Remote Desktop to record footage from this point forward. It's not ideal, but it's going to make a lot of things easier to show and demonstrate. Even on the login screen, we can already see quite a few differences as compared to stock Windows XP, such as the revised branding. 
That's not counting things such as the Luna theme being unavailable and the lack of fast user switching. In fact, the entire system feels unfinished, and it honestly behaves more like a beta build than anything else. I have to wonder if this product only exists due to some sort of contract obligation. That being said, if we go into the start menu, we can see that Pinball is nowhere to be seen. It's not even listed in the Windows Components wizard. A closer examination of the setup files on the CD shows that Pinball was removed from the manifest, and thus it would never be installed. That means that the existence of Pinball.exe on the XP installation disk appears to be an accident, and thus it's almost certainly a broken binary. However, I don't need to take that on faith. By looking at the installation manifest for other versions of Windows, I can determine all the files necessary to install Pinball by hand, and it was trivial to extract these for testing. Now, assuming that Raymond Chen's blog post was accurate, we should have a mildly amusing glitch. Unfortunately, when I try and run Pinball, it simply crashes to desktop. I actually ended up installing WinDebug and trying to isolate the cause of the crash, and from what I can tell, it attempts to load several of the game resources, but then ends up crashing with a memory access error. I had trouble finding the specific cause of the crash, partially due to the fact that Itanium assembly code is notoriously difficult to read. I did see that not long before the crash, the game tries to load a bunch of floating point numbers relating to collision detection, but I'm not certain if that's related. However, it would fit in with what Raymond Chen wrote. It should also be noted that I matched the crash debugger multiple times while doing this, which should give you an idea of just how much pain and suffering I went through. Thankfully, I did eventually dig up a newer version of WinDebug, which was much more stable, but it's never a good sign when you need to debug your debugger. It was while I was in this debugger purgatory that I had something of a revelation. Since there were multiple versions of XP4 Itanium, it was possible that there were multiple versions of Pinball. Sure enough, there was a compressed pinball binary on the XP 2003 CD we just installed from. Compared side by side, we can see differences in the file size and modification dates, but the biggest difference here is that this version actually starts up. That means we should be able to see Raymond's bug, right? I want you to all put in the comments what you think is going to happen when I launch the ball. As a reminder, according to the blog post, the game's collision detector should go completely bananas. Well, that's long enough. Let's try it. Bet you all weren't expecting that. In fact, I wasn't expecting that. I am not exaggerating when I said I spent days trying to figure out how this was possible. It's pretty clear though that something isn't adding up. First off, I want to make this clear. This is a native Itanium version of Pinball and not the 32-bit version in disguise. We can clearly see that with the binary loaded in WinDebug. Furthermore, just like the version we saw on AMD64, there are some minor graphical glitches. As far as bugs go, I also found that I can't launch the ball while playing over remote desktop. I think this is a problem with how our desktop is handling the spacebar though, and not a problem with pinball per se. Even taking that into account, I can play normally by using the launch ball menu option. Regardless, I now have multiple 64-bit versions of pinball, and while not perfect, they are clearly serviceable. That would seem to indicate that Raymond Chen was wrong on why pinball was removed. However, as strange as it may seem, given the available evidence, I actually believe his account. I just think there's more to it than that, especially because I can prove part of his story. Let's take a look at a version of Pinball that I modified slightly with Greedra. Keep your eye on the ball. Did you catch that? I'll play it again in slow motion.
the ball clipped through the paddles and drained. I caused this by changing the FPU precision mode from 53 bits to 64 bits. The increase in precision introduced the type of rounding issues that Raymond speculated about and broke the collision detection on the paddles. Furthermore, this FPU mode would be similar if not identical to how floating point numbers would behave on both Itanium and on the X64 builds of Windows. I think though before we go on, this merits a bit more of an in-depth explanation. If you're not familiar with what a floating point number is, then the short version is that it's how a computer handles numbers that have a decimal point. The slightly longer version is that a floating point number is an approximation that is useful for handling very large and very small numbers. Now, I could bore you with math, but let's go with a visual demonstration, and for that we need Minecraft Beta 1.7.3. Now, you might be wondering why we're here. Well, in this version of the game, if you go far enough away from the center of the world, reality kinda breaks. In Minecraft, the position of the player and various in-world entities are handled through floating point numbers. For instance, at 1 million blocks, we can see that the hitbox is off-center from where it should be, and movement is no longer smooth and fluid. If we skip ahead to 2.1 million blocks out, we can see that the precision issues have become noticeably worse. For instance, the hitbox on the furnace is now considerably offset, and the flames from the torch are no longer aligned. This is an example of how floating point values can break down given extreme values. It should be noted that one of the most famous glitches relating to distance in Minecraft, the Farlands, is not a precision issue. They are instead caused by what's known as an integer overflow. However, since we're now 12 million blocks away from spawn, everything has become considerably more broken. At this distance, the hitbox appears to be drunk, and, well, you can see the fire effects for yourself. Even the F3 screen is having trouble with reporting our position. The too long, didn't watch version of all this can be summed up as, decimal places are magic. Now, to give you an idea of how different precision modes change things, let's migrate this world to the current version of Minecraft. We can see that the furnace, torch, and farland chunks are still here, but things are considerably less broken. Our hitboxes and particle effects are exactly where they should be. This is because in the intervening versions, Minecraft changed its code to use double precision floats, which can handle much larger values, hence the lack of jitter. Conversely, our pinball problem could be seen as writing code that expects the glitchy mess present in beta 1.7.3, but is instead getting the nice smooth behavior from Minecraft 1.17. I do hope that this explains what is, unfortunately, a non-trivial topic to grasp. However, the question is now, how did pinball get fixed? My first thought was that this was potentially an accident. If pinball was fixed due to changes in either Microsoft's compiler or the C runtime environment, it might be working by happenstance. Furthermore, if the XPX64 team didn't realize that pinball was supposed to be broken, it might explain why it was left enabled. However, as I continued to look deeper into this, it quickly became apparent that there were real code changes and this wasn't some sort of accident. Over time, the pieces of a much larger puzzle began to slot into place, and I ended up tracing the history of Pinball from its NT days all the way through to post-reset Windows Longhorn. All my research led me to one inescapable conclusion. Pinball was intentionally fixed for 64-bit platforms. I do honestly suspect that Raymond Chen had assumed that after Pinball had been cut from Windows on Itanium, that was the end of it. We already know that isn't the case, but it does beg the question that I've been building up to throughout the entire video, and that's just what exactly happened to Space Cadet Pinball. We know that Pinball was removed from the original XP for Itanium release, and at the time, Pinball didn't work at all. Meanwhile, a working, albeit still disabled version shipped in XP 2003. That might seem rather strange unless one was to take a look at what else Microsoft was doing in this time period. 
You see, in parallel to their work on Itanium, Microsoft was also working on porting Windows to AMD's new x64 platform. While this port wouldn't ship until 2005, the earliest known betas date to 2003, and it's easy to assume that work was being done well before that point. It appears that Microsoft intended to release the AMD64 port with the next version of Windows, which was then known as Longhorn. For various reasons, this future didn't come to pass. However, it can give us insight into what Microsoft was planning. Many of the answers to this pinball mystery can be found in these early builds, and specifically Windows Longhorn build 4051. Trust me, this is where the story gets a bit wild. Build 4051 was originally compiled in late 2003 and released at the Professional Developers Conference that same year. It's one of the earliest known AMD64 builds of Windows and also one of the few builds that were compiled for all three architectures. As such, we can compare them side by side. As I already implied, Pinball is present and works just fine on the AMD64 version of build 4051. Just like all other 64-bit builds, there are a few minor graphical glitches, but it otherwise plays just fine. However, the real interesting thing here is in the 32-bit version of this build. As one might expect, the i386 version also has pinball, and it shouldn't surprise anyone that this version is flawless. However, in an attempt to ascertain if pinball had notably changed post-XP, I ended up performing the same binary patch to enable 64-bit precision. This is what caused the ball clipping bug before, but on Longhorn, it does something different. That is to say, it works just fine. This was my first solid evidence that real code changes had been made to fix pinball on 64-bit windows. In fact, this build of Longhorn tells us quite a bit more than one might realize. It suggests that pinball was fixed in the process of creating the AMD 64 port, and it's likely that no one realized that fixing it for x64 also fixed it for Itanium. The IA64 version of build 4051 leads credence to this theory. Getting it to install on my ZX6000 was not a fun experience, and to add insult to injury, remote desktop seems broken, so you're going to have to deal with me pointing a camera at a screen. In keeping with everything we have seen thus far, Pinball is still disabled here, although as one may expect, the files are present, and after a manual extraction, it does indeed work. So, in short, there's no real change from XP 2003 edition. My next theory was that Pinball was removed on the basis of feature disparity. Microsoft may have wanted identical feature sets across all versions of Windows, which may have prompted for Pinball's complete removal. However, this theory doesn't hold water for one simple reason. Microsoft never seemed concerned over the feature drift between the Itanium and x86-based versions of Windows. As we already saw, XP 2003 edition was missing the Luna theme, and later versions of Windows were missing even more bits. In fact, a TechNet article shows that for Windows Server 2008, Microsoft had nearly stripped the Itanium port bare. I did get Server 2008 R2 to install on my ZX6000, and well, I've always been surprised that Microsoft shipped such a bad port at all. This machine isn't officially supported, and well, let's just say that Arrow looks really bad in 16 colors at 640x480, although I suppose it's excused by the fact that Arrow on Itanium only exists in the installer and cannot be installed via the desktop experience option either. Fortunately, it is possible to shoo in the XP Ethernet drivers so I can at least use our desktop again. That being said, to give you an idea of just how much is missing in this, opening the Add Roles wizard shows that the only things supported are application servers and IIS. That's it. 
I think the sad state of the IA64 port is pretty clear proof that Microsoft didn't care if something didn't work on Itanium. That being said, I've been weirdly tempted to try and see if I could port PHP and my SQL, but I probably should get back to the topic at hand before moving on to future pain projects. However, having ruled out both 64-bit incompatibility and feature disparity, then what's left? Why was Pinball removed? Well, to answer that, we need to enter the final chapter of the story. While Longhorn was intended as a quick follow-up to XP, the project was marred with stability issues and feature creep. Ultimately, Microsoft would reset Longhorn's development, eventually creating what would become Windows Vista. Windows XP X64 would be released as a stopgap product in 2005, which represents the only official 64-bit version of Windows that shipped with Pinball. Given Longhorn's tortured development, part of me had wondered if Pinball had been removed by mistake. It was possible that during the development reset, someone removed Pinball without being aware that it was fixed on 64-bit platforms. Looking at the post-reset builds of Longhorn, Pinball itself lasted until build 5048. Build 5048 only had AMD 64 and 32-bit versions available, but both have Pinball installed by default. This seems to rule out the possibility of accidental removal during the development reset. However, there's one thing in particular that caught my attention. Build 5048, in addition to Pinball, also has the same classic games as Windows XP. For instance, Solitaire remains almost unchanged from its XP incarnation, which itself is virtually the same as the version from Windows 3.0. However, Vista did not ship with these games. Skipping ahead to the final release of Windows Vista, it instead shipped with revamped DirectX versions of the games with updated graphics. This was likely intended to demonstrate the new compositing engine, as well as make things look consistent with the then-new Arrow look and feel. This is especially evident when comparing XP Solitaire side-by-side -side with Vista's. If we load Space Cadet Pinball on Vista, it clearly looks out of place, and it doesn't help that Pinball's art was intended for a 640x480 display. For Pinball to properly fit with the new aesthetic, it would likely involve replacing and revamping all the graphics. This, however, presents a problem. Space Cadet Pinball was not ran by Microsoft. It was instead licensed from Maxis as something of a demonstration game for their Full Tilt Pinball collection. My guess would be that Microsoft either didn't have the rights to replace the art, or more likely, simply didn't want to dedicate the resources to do so. As such, I suspect that Pinball was actually axed because it didn't look very good on Vista. What I can say for CERN is that Pinball was fixed for 64-bit platforms and did in fact ship on XPX64. I suspect that no one noticed the graphical glitches as they're not very evident unless you're very familiar with how Pinball should look. Even if they were noticed, it would likely be a fairly straightforward fix. As such, I'm inclined to believe that Pinball was not cut for any technical reason. Unfortunately, we may never know for sure. As always, I welcome you to the comment section to help Theorycraft. I spent literal weeks exploring and disassembling various versions of Pinball for this video, so if you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe. If you really enjoyed this content, consider supporting me on Patreon. With all that said, this is N Commander, signing out and wishing you all a pleasant day.